So, welcome to the OFX podcast. I'm Dave Claxton, and along with me, as always, is uh, our Spartan Pro and Strathroy Speedy Speed Sweetheart. Speedy Sweetheart. That was a tongue twister. <laughs> Bethany McChesney. Hey, Beth. Hello. So, right off the bat, um, Spartan sent out an email to everybody. Well, everybody in Canada that does Spartan or doesn't do Spartan, but this signed up where it's clicked on a thing, or for some reason you're on there mailing us. You got a letter, an email. And it panicked everybody. Did you get the letter? You got it, I assume. I did, yeah. But I skimmed it because it was confusing. <laughs> so <laughs> what did you... So I was confused at first. So what did you think when you first read it? Um, I, it felt like a very... Uh, almost like a blanket. If you have a code, you're going to be able to use it at some point in the next two years. Yeah. And then... I was like, okay, but again, there was no, I can see people panicking about, it was confusing in that it felt like, cause they were talking about we'll release 2020, sorry, 2022 dates soon. It did feel like, oh, is that what we're thinking about now? Cause is, is it canceled? So that was, that was kind of the confusing part, but I hadn't heard anything was canceled. So I, was, I don't know. No, I was just saying like, I got it and like, I don't know. I thought, like, you know, I, I knew the code thing. I knew the code thing before. I knew they were going to off, you know, if you couldn't use the codes, they were going to extend it. Of course, they were going to. That's not not a big surprise. But I was the same. I'm like, so are they canceling it? Or it almost felt like that, like a, like a feel out text or a feel out letter. So, like, if you were, you were like sending it to a girl and you were like interested in her and you were like, you know, just like joking, you know, maybe we should go out. But, um, you know, and then she says, like, oh, don't be crazy. And you're like, no, oh, that's why I was joking. And it almost it almost felt like Spartan was doing that with canceling the season. Like, you know, it's like, oh, but uh, after speaking with them, that that's not what they were doing unless they realized we didn't take it well and decided, no, we're joking. Um, so they're not canceling the season. Everything is still slated as it should be. But I mean, bear in mind, as we've said all along, that's today, tomorrow could change. So, but right now they say it, everything's still as scheduled as it was. Don't panic. Don't worry. This was just so you can know that you can use your, your codes, which is, is good. Yeah. And I think it, it might also, it felt a bit too, like they're just trying to gauge if people are, are nervous about racing right now, or if, if they all of a sudden started to see people waiting and wanting to use their codes in 2022 instead. Why Which the could help them determine what's going to happen with races this year. It's going to be screwed up for them. Like, I mean, because how are they? It must be hard as hell to gauge how many people are going to come or what's going to happen. Because I don't know about you, but I haven't signed up for shit. No, I just keep waiting. Because, I, again, I don't want to make solid plans. Yeah. I did book a flight, but it's transferable for free. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the safe thing to do. Do that. If, if, if Whatever you're doing, if you're booking things, make sure that your, your hotel rooms are cancelable really quick and flights yeah. are cancelable or whatever. Yeah. Holidays from work. Yeah, but yeah, I haven't booked anything. I'm like, I'm I'm not usually the wait and see guy. I'm usually, and in the beginning of this, I was like, still pay for the races to support these companies because they need to. Well, I've done that. Mm -hmm. And we've discussed, I've gotten to the point where I don't even know what I have anymore. <laughs> like, I don't know what codes I have anymore. I don't, I have some like a list on my phone, but I know there's some missing. Mm -hmm. And then I've got other ones that I've gotten since that have been from a year ago. And You're probably good for the next two years of races. Yeah, but what'll happen is I'll have lost it all and just end up paying anyway. <laughs> You're their favorite kind of person. Yeah, too lazy to dig into it. <laughs> yeah. I know I got a code for this, but I don't know where it is, so I'll just pay again. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks for the letter, Spartan. Confuse the hell out of everybody. Hopefully everybody's a little more clear now, and hopefully races go off like that. Yeah. Um, oh, so that does mean still in line right now, and I don't think we talked about this um, as yet, was the uh, Canadian series. Yep. So the official Canadian series is now, so it's Red Deer and Collingwood. So what is, it, is it Red Deer Super or I don't yeah, know? Yeah, Red Deer Super and then the Collingwood Beast. And what's the cash? So the cash, so at the individual events, um, it. it is, so 3,000 for first, 1,000 for second and 800 for third and then it goes down all the way to top 10 from there like and then the overall series 
So of the two races, points combined, uh, the series winners get 4,500 for first, 2,000 for second, and 1,250 for third. And it goes, again, it goes down to 10. See, I like, th I like that it goes down to 10 because I think you get too many people, and especially we talked about so many times where you get small elite waves because everybody's like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to win. I'm not going to be in the top three. So I'm going to do my age group so I can at least stand on a podium. But if there's money all the way down to the top 10. Yeah, then... especially for women because yeah. traditionally in Canadian races for women on the pro side, we don't always even have much more than 15. So wow. if you get to both races and you're racing pro, I mean, you have a pretty good chance of being in prize money. Well, and Spartan might actually, because there might not be 10 women that actually make it. So they might actually be able to keep that money. <laughs> that's true <laughs> i think i think i was talking to sean sean and i can never remember his name sean philip philip thank you and he said like uh when he he podiumed at um at uh owl's head one time he was like 50 bucks so it's definitely yeah definitely a big improvement and i think what you're going to find for this one originally when they announced and we're going to go back to 2019 i think it was 2019 when they announced we were going to have a Canadian series and they were going to have good prize money, was you were going to have, like, I remember Woodsy saying, I'm going to come up and Forrest and a lot of those guys that are up uh, close to work, I'm going to come up and, and, and race it. It's going to be good races. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen this year. Yeah, and Faye said she was going to come back and race them. Um, yeah, I can't see Americans. And we also, we don't know what it's going to be like uh, when these races do happen because right now there's still a mandatory two week quarantine. So America, you're not going to come up from the States if you have to do that. It doesn't make sense at all. No, no, not if it's a two week quarantine. I mean, that's yeah. especially like, like even if you won and you got a thousand bucks, well, then you're going to do a two week Yeah. It's yeah. Stuff. I don't think there's going to be nearly the cross border, um, this time this year. Which really plays your advantage, so good for you. Yeah, for me. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> like, I was going to win it all, but I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to sit out this one. Maybe I'll video it just, just to be nice, give everybody a chance. <laughs> yeah, good idea, Dave. Um, okay, so something else we forgot to do. So a lot of house cleaning today because we forget to do a lot of stuff and we got busy and sidetracked. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk a lot about High Rocks in Austin. So Austin, Texas had High Rocks. And, um, yeah, why don't you go through, because we like to do this, nobody else is doing this, so we feel obligated to do this. Let's uh, announce a dramatic reading of the podiums by Bethany McChesney. <laughs> All right, so on the men's, and I don't have time, so we're just going to stick it to the, with the names here. So the men's podium in Austin, we had Brent Hastert, we had Cole Schwartz in second, and Preston Burnett in third. On the women's side, we had Callie... Uh, Callie uh, Swikart, Vivian Tafudo, and Caitlin uh, Leshikowska. I, I butchered that name for sure. So that's your women's Pretty podium. good. I thought you did all right. <laughs> <laughs> so then we have the team event. So women's doubles. The winning team was Leslie um, Cabe Fasik with Laura Henry. Second place, we had Lauren Barner and Jessica Abernathy. And third, we had Gio Apol Apollinar and Anna Valer. Valero. The men's teams for um, the men's doubles, we had Wooch Graf with Murph Murphy. That is the best team ever. Wooch, <laughs> Wooch Graf and Murph Murphy. I, yeah. I love those parents are probably pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the second place team for men, we had Taylor H Haney with uh, Paul Calmer. And then the third place men's team, we had Jason Savat with Jeff Jorgensen. Mixed doubles, we had Alex Prostino with Bethany Welch in first. Second place, we had Kelly Williams with Chris Belvin. And then third place, we had Sherry Adams with Woodson Witt. And congratulations, everybody. That was awesome. Great job. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys in Orlando as well, in Chicago. Uh, a couple of things that jump out right away uh, that I noticed about that was actually in the women's four, five, and six. And in so in fourth we had Kelly Sullivan, who you know is fantastic, and she ran a 119, which is really good. And Faith Cook, uh, we all know from the yeah. Invitational, from Spartan Games, from just awesome, funny person on Instagram. Yeah, she ran another 19, 1943, which is pretty similar to what she ran in the Invitational. And one of her favorites, Morgan Schultz, she had a bit of an off day, 
one twenty one forty two for her. That's that you know that's that's off for Morgan. Yeah. And um, she posted about it, and she seemed very down about it. And uh, I hope that Morgan, you know, just takes it in stride. She's young. We all have hiccups. Yeah. You know, and I know she's been focusing on school, so it's, yeah. it's, it's really hard to put your attention in too many places. And I know that's a priority for her, too. So. And you know what? That was it's still not a bad time. That's still decent. Like, that's still good. I, yeah. you know, I know, I know it's not what she wanted and I'm sure she was going there hoping to win, mm. but you know, shake it off, dust off, get back out there and kick some ass. Yeah. And I, that's a throwback because she was afraid to say yes. And I just did it again for her. <laughs> so, uh, other parts about Austin, a little bit of controversy. So we had two bigger names that were there that you did not hear on the leaderboard and are nowhere to be found. Um, Isaiah Vidal who probably a lot of people were probably cheering that he wasn't on there because he's he's the only OCR villain. <laughs> I met him, he wasn't that bad. <laughs> but anyway, apparently he missed one of the lengths of the sled pusher pull, I'm not sure. And he got DQ'd for that. Uh, and then Victor Quesada, who less people would be happy about because he's very popular and very well liked and a kick-ass athlete. He, from what I understand, put his timing chip in his pocket and it's supposed to be on your ankle and whether his time didn't read or they disqualified him for not having the right spot. I'm not sure exactly, but he got DQ'd as well and his time was not there. Um, what's your first thought about that? Because I see you're like thinking, I can see your wheels grinding, you know. Well, I, I, I don't exactly know what the sled thing happened with Isaiah, but I find it really interesting that you would just completely DQ someone for missing a segment. Because I know with High Rocks, when I was there, it seemed like there was a lot of mistakes that happened. People doing things out of order, um, missing laps, adding laps later. And it was all very um, reasonable time penalties. Like mm -hmm. three minutes for this, five minutes for that. So I, I don't know why they made this decision to just completely DQ him. Because um, he's Isaiah. Yeah. Pardon? Because <laughs> he's Isaiah. Yeah, maybe, yeah, that's why. <laughs> it's like the Woodsy of Spartan. Oh, jeez, out. No, more, more people like Woodsy, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just seemed like a very unrealist, like very, um, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. No, again, I haven't had a chance to actually run the High Rocks yet, but correct me if I'm wrong. When you're doing wall balls, somebody's counting your reps, right? Yes. And when you're doing the rower and when you're doing the skier, somebody is officiating. And if you read the rules, you have to signal the judge and they come by and okay that your reps are done. Yeah. So like I, with everything, there was every time, especially so in the pro heat, when you come into your workout zone, there is a judge that comes in with you. So mm -hmm. they're with you almost the whole time. The row, there's kind of people looking back and forth. But then once you hit um, like 900 meters, because it's, it's 1K, they're there and then they, they're saying go. So you almost, it, in some ways, it does take thinking out of it. But when you're ca the rep counting ones, like wall balls and stuff, there wasn't really, you don't have to, you don't have to count or anything. So with the sled, like they, they must have done... Uh, like shorter back and forth. I don't I think know. They're sticking with that 12 and a half meter section. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and like Re Renee made that mistake too. Yeah. In Dallas, which I still, I, I find it hard to get how you would miss a uh, whole length, but. Maybe he missed two, right? Maybe he missed two. Yeah. But the, the point is what I, what I just started thinking here and I hadn't even thought of it until I just, until we were talking now. Isn't the judge partially responsible for that? Because it would be the judge that would give him the okay to take off. Yeah, so I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna assume he was somewhere in the lead. So there would have been a judge with him, and they would have. So I th maybe the judge was like, "Go, go, go." Yeah. So I mean, there's got to be some kind of partial acceptance acceptance of responsibility there. And you know what? We would have a much clearer clearer interpretation if they had done a live stream. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Huh? But they didn't. So anyway, um, mm -hmm. I still think like you're right. Even let's just say for argument's sake, it was Isaiah's fault, which I'm starting to think it wasn't. But let's say it was. There still needs to be a more realistic penalty situation yeah. than, you know, you missed you missed a, a, a lap 
that's an automatic DQ. I mean, it could be a 10 minute penalty. It could be huge, yeah. but a straight DQ seems, seems off, seems wrong to me. And it, it also made me think, and I'll go, I'll talk about Victor in a sec, but it also made me think back to Katie Knight in the Invitational when she got DQ'd for setting the sandbag down, right? Cause she kind of oh. saw a video. I think I wasn't sure who put it on Instagram, but I saw it. And when she did her lunge, she kind of fell over. Right. So she hit the ground, the bag hit the ground and then they DQ'd her from there because they said you the bag has to be on your shoulders the whole time. Hmm. So I read, I went and downloaded the Hyrox rules again because this got me thinking back to that. I downloaded the Hyrox rules again and read it and read for the lunges. And it says that, yes, the sandbag needs to stay on your shoulders the whole time and your knee hits the ground and needs to hit the ground. And it's but it began, then said, you know, failure, essentially a failure or something like that, anything like that is a 10 meter penalty. So you go back 10 meters and start again. So in my mind, when she hit the ground and that sandbag dropped, she should have just been, okay, go back 10 meters, yeah. pick it up and start again from there. Yeah. I, I I don't like these these slam instant DQs for stuff like that. Like that, especially So with the with the sled though, and this is where I can can see why they might totally DQ someone for this is if you're someone who is who really really struggles with the sled and let's say the penalty is about the amount of time it would take you to push the rest of that distance anyways you might just strategically decide i'm not going to push the sled the rest of the way and i'm going to take the five or ten minute penalty because then i have fresher legs so maybe that's why they did it with the sled so that's that's really good and that's bang on and you know <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about something else other word that was very related to the same thing if we go back to hildervat when the girls skipped the um the hoist the hoist right now this doesn't matter because it really didn't affect anything but when they skipped the hoist and then they went, went around another time and they had to do the hoist and let all the other girls skip it well let's just say for argument's sake i really sucked at that hoist and i was up front and that was really hard for me like let's say i'm i was a smaller small one of the smaller women who a lot of times you see it savage and can't get that hoist up yeah and then they skipped it but then the other girls were able to skip it. It's like, again, you, you're playing to your advantage. And I was thinking the same thing. You could, that can almost become strategy. And you're right about the sled push. Yeah, like if it takes you 10 minutes to do <laughs> one lap, then they got a 10 minute penalty. Right. It's good strategy. So so definitely, yeah, you, you, you make a good point. I still think there could, there's gotta be a happy medium. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe they just double your sled time. I don't know. There's gotta be some kind of creative way to to figure out a not instant DQ. Yeah. Um, and then Victor Quesada, uh, you know what? They tell you all the time, put the timer on your ankle, put the timer on your wrist. They tell you where to put it. You didn't put it where you put it, man, well, you know, it's cheesy, but I get it. Yeah, I know. It's one of those things like, just do it. Like, yeah. why didn't you put it on your ankle? Yeah, obviously it was some, I think maybe it was bugging the shoe or there was some problem with it or whatever. I haven't, I haven't heard what he said. I can get, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel right in that area, but, you know, especially when you're indoors, those, they, they have to have those really sensitive and they can, in such a small area, they can, they can malfunction really easily if they're not in exactly the right spot. So I get where High Rocks is coming from on that one. Mm -hmm. So sorry, Victor. Yeah, it's a weird one, but I get it. All right. Um, another High Rocks coming up this weekend, mm -hmm. in Orlando this time. And it is the Orlando time trial. So have you heard about that? Do you understand? Did you see that? I, no, I haven't really heard much about this one. So well, you it, because I wrote an article about it, but that's okay. Fine. That's fine. I, I'm all right. That's fine. I'm, I have no ego. I'm sorry. <laughs> so essentially, um, when you, when you do high rocks, a certain amount of people move on to qualify. And this is a qualifier for the Chicago North American or U S championships, whatever they're calling it. And Normally, it's a certain amount of people. I can't remember if it's top five or top three or whatever it is qualify. High Rocks has decided in Orlando what they're going to do is they're going to institute time levels for people to hit to qualify. So if you're, for example, if you're a pro man, pro, a male pro and you're the age 16 to 24, uh, you have to do a, a 128, which is actually pretty, pretty, pretty doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for example, me, as I would do, try to do, well, I would add probably a try age group anyway. It would be age group, pro, pro male. They have to hit like a 130. So, you know, it's, these are doable times. So yeah. 
I, I think I think it's a good idea mm-hmm. because whether I agree with the actual times they put out or not, that's one thing. But I've I think I've brought this up before where I get annoyed where you know my placement. So I might maybe you go maybe you go to High Rocks and this is your one chance to qualify because you can only hit one event in a year, and you show up there. And you're like, all right, I know I can, I can run a, a one ten, mm-hmm. right? And that should be good. That's that's good night. But then, um, you know, Rebecca Hammond, Rachel, and Lauren all show up, and only the top three get in. Yeah. And like, yeah. You know, you're you're boned, right? Because you know you can put in a great time, but you're likely not going to beat them because they're going to run like one hundred six is one hundred eight and that kind of thing. Yeah. So I like that this is. It only matters about your performance somebody else so somebody else isn't going to keep you out of the event the only one that can keep you out of the event is you and i like that i think that's great yeah it's kind of like how they do the american track olympic qualifying you just have to run the time yeah that makes sense you know what since you brought up track you gotta you gotta mention the track thing what you want to mention track? yeah you gotta mention the record that that fell uh in our canadian team yeah so damian warner a, a london boy Lives household name pardon household name in, in london he is yeah <laughs> yeah so he actually broke two records this weekend so he was competing in the um in a, deca- a big decathlon in austria he's won this one four or five times already i think i think five times so reigning champ uh he goes back this year and hasn't competed in like 14 months and destroys our canadian record in the decathlon uh wins the overall event again and his score was Eight eight thousand nine hundred and ninety-five. It's actually the fourth highest score in history. Wow! Like for Canada or for in the world ever. Wow. Yeah, and while he's setting this record, he also sets the Canadian record in long jump. So not not long jump into decathlon, long jump. Do you know what that tells me? We need better what? long jumpers. So long jump was his sport. Okay, yeah, so long jump was his sport when he was in high school, and he has officer records in long jump. And because of some injuries and stuff, he naturally gravitated to decathlon because he was doing some other things to kind of mix things up. So decathlon kind of became his sport, but long jump was originally. So actually, but his long jump was actually would have placed him fourth at the last Olympics. Really? It, it was. It's that good. He jumped eight point two nine meters wow that's awesome like i mean 8.29 i don't know the numbers but just the fact that he would have been fourth at the last olympics that's well he was over he was about a half a meter further than the second place person that's a lot (laughs) in an event that's won by centimeters that's a lot well and so we've had like canadian records dropping a lot lately yeah is it do you think that it's because like they're they're able to focus more on training because of the way things are you know, like right now, the track and field world in Canada is just, it's blowing up. It's just so exciting to see, especially on the women's side. And I have i have another thing I'm going to tell you that's really exciting happened this weekend too. But I, I was like, why is this happening now? It's, it's crazy. People are just running insane time. I, I think some of it might honestly be that they a lot of people haven't really competed in, in like a year. So I think in some ways it gave people a year to just kind of relax, go back to basics and maybe spend a year focusing on like base building. You're not, typically they'd be traveling um, and racing quite often. And I think it just gave them a time to just kind of, you know, take a year and just base build and then um, kind of a bit more of a relaxed year. And now they've come back with just this crazy fire to compete. So something else really interesting, super exciting happened. So yesterday, um, at a meet in Portland. So our Canadian uh, girl who is from Toronto, Gabriella W. Stafford. So she's run, she's become the first Canadian to ever run, get this. So she ran, she just ran sub two in the 800. So she ran a 157 in the 800. So she's become the first woman to run sub two, sub four in the 1500, sub nine minutes in the 3000 and sub 15 minutes in, in the 5000. She did all of that. Like, was that, that at one event? No, was no. So she's done all of that this year. Accomplish all those goals. That's, yeah. She's done all of that this year. This year. So, which also means she's now run Olympic qualifying standards in, in four track events from the 800 to the 5,000. 
it's like grade school like like in grade school what i did like i think it was <laughs> i think it was grade seven because i have an odd birthday year i was bigger and older than the other kids so i got to go to a track for like six different things <laughs> so different in the olympics so holy crap like so yeah. how do you, I, I mean imagine they're they're because i don't know anything about olympic qualifications or anything like that so will they just deem her for like one maybe two or, be, or because it's tracked do they maybe put you in a few more because i know like maybe if you run the 400 then you go in the four by 400 relay as well kind of thing yeah so typically how it works in canada is um with the with those track events anyways the the marathon's its own thing but so you have to run the olympic qualifying time so you have to run olympic standard and then you have to come then top three at our national championship so if you come if you run olympic qualifying time and you come fourth you don't go which has kind of been weird in some at some points when let's say the race is very tactical which yeah. it always is anyways and then a person podiums but they might not have run olympic standard it doesn't happen very very often but it could happen and mm -hmm. then it bumps out someone who has run olympic standard so that's how it's been before this year they just changed it actually this week where our Canadians don't have to attend nationals. And it's because most of them are racing in the States right now. Yeah. So now they don't have to run at our national championship. So now it's basically uh, likely the top three fastest times in each event and it, they're selected. But okay. ultimately it also, and that's over the last two years, it's ultimately it's a decision by Athletics Canada because um, so it's likely the top three, but if someone ran their time, let's say a year ago, and they haven't proven fitness recently, then they still, they might not be selected. So it's ultimately the decision of Athletics Canada. So who decides we only send three? Is that like uh, based on population or is that just Athletics Canada only wants to send three? No, that's the Olympic rule. That's the Olympic rules. Cause it seems like, you know, I don't know, send more if there's qualified. I'm, <laughs> again, it goes back to that high rocks thing. I like the time trial thing. If yeah. you make the time, you should be able to go. Yeah, no, that's the Olympic rule. So three men and three women in each event. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> you know, I love watching the Olympics, but I also, you know, it's, and I'm like everybody else when the Olympics are on, I become an expert in every sport, everything that's out there. <laughs> I'm like the master of skeet shooting, the curling analyst du jour. And you, and you would never watch any of those sports except during the Olympics. Exactly, exactly. I will watch the <laughs> hell out of track and field during the Olympics, but no, no other time. Yeah, <laughs> even at, uh, what is it? Um, where they twirl the ribbon? You put a you put a Canadian flag on somebody. I'll watch her twirl the ribbon. <laughs> Fucking twirl that thing! <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> I don't remember what point was. Anyway, my point was that like, if you make the time, just like the high rocks thing, if you make the time, I think you should go. I think you should be able to go. Um, I'm sure it's a funding thing and an Olympic rule thing and. And those corrupt bastards, you know, just give them some more money and we can send more people. I think that's how it works. Yeah. I think the Olympics would get out of control, though, if you did that. Probably. That's yeah. why they haven't asked me to run it. <laughs> yeah, Dave. <laughs> that's awesome, though. It's great. It's good to see. I'm, I am really stoked about the Olympics, other than the confusing part about them still calling it the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. I'm like, I'm sure we're in 2021. I'm positive. It's interesting, though, because a lot of people... Um, when like when you look at so the stuff has gone out pretty big about Damian Warner and this uh, his record, and a lot of people when you look at comments are really really angry. They're angry. They're very angry that we are still going to send an Olympic team when our country is basically shut down, and yeah. also that these athletes are being given this opportunity to do their sport when our kids can't. So there's been, it was really interesting actually to read the comments and I don't usually like to go down that rabbit hole, but I was a little bit stunned that people were so upset. You, you know what? I was going to be like, you know, screw those people. But I, I get it. It's a valid point. I might not agree with it, but it's valid, you know? Um, yeah. I, I understand on some level the whole, like my kids aren't playing the sport that they love right now. And and then these people are, it's also different because it is their job and how they make money. So I, I understand the difference, but I also understand people's upset. But I think what you said right there, that nails it, is it's their job and that's how they make money. And it's it, no different. And I know people will say bullshit, but it's no different than the truckers driving back and forth across the border and they need to do it. That's their job to make money. 
Uh, we talk about Ryan and Lindsay, you know, uh, sneaking into the states to do to do yeah. their to do their job, and it is it is their job. That's how they make money. They're professionals. Our, our NHL players doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, all that sort of stuff. So I think, you know, give them a break. And then, I'm sorry, maybe I'm I'm like um, overtly patriotic on this one, despite the fact I've been a little pissed at Canada lately. Mm-hmm. You know what, the, the Olympics, it, it brings us together. It gives us all a rallying point and we could use a lot of positivity right now. And I think, you know, let them go, let them complete. I think we need it. I agree. And, you know, you have to think too, like with, along with it being people's jobs, a lot of people, they, they live their life in Olympic cycles. So mm-hmm. there's people that have put their life on hold for a, another four year, now five year Olympic cycle. It's it's quite different when you think about it that way. And, and you know what? Completely oh. take that away from them. And the more I think about it now, because I've had thirty seconds to think about it, now I can be definitively upset about something. <laughs> it comes down to, and I used to hear this all the time. People would be mad at, and I'm going to sound way off track, but I promise you, it's it's in the same realm. I'm not on a tangent. This makes sense. People will get upset at teachers in Canada because they get all these days off they get good pay they get this they get that and they'd be like well i don't get that why should they don't get it stop being mad because they don't you don't get it and they do be mad at yourself because you don't get it so don't be mad at the canadian athletes who want to go to the olympics and are being allowed to go to the olympics and your son or daughter can't play rec hockey be mad at the people holding them back from playing rec hockey right yeah just direct your anger in the right place exactly you want to be mad at somebody don't be mad don't don't be upset because you're envious because the people they get to go and yeah they this is their job they poured into it so yes i'm fully on board with the olympians now now i now i can back up my thoughts of why i was angry with the other people <laughs> a little bit think of it <laughs> all right um oh okay yes and again as far as i know for orlando high rocks no live stream guys seriously really I, as far as i know i've been asking and uh, i haven't heard anything from from ORM or from High Rocks themselves as to whether they have a live stream or not. Like seriously, guys, this is the easiest thing to do to live stream on. We have proved it. We had, you know, four guys with the IQ of one solid person and we, we pulled it off. So it can be done, do it. it just, just yeah. do it. It's nothing else to do. People with cell phones. Yeah, yeah, get two guys with cell phones, a guy on this with a laptop. It literally is all it takes. Get really fancy and give them a gimbal. That'd be even greater. Yeah. A yeah. Wi-Fi code, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you can again. I said before, you can pay a guy a sandwich and he'll follow them around. Yeah. Oh, and buy a drone. Jesus. Anyone doing this streaming out there, buy a drone, even a cheap mm-hmm. one, especially indoors. There's no wind to blow it around. Shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Um, we went a lot longer on all that stuff than I thought. That's true. Um, do you want to go through what we were going to do? Um, I feel like that would be a long time now. I think it would take you. I think we should save that. Um, yeah. What I, I do want to talk about a little bit, like I said, is, and again, and maybe I'll just ask you this question and we'll kind of wrap it up and we'll do a short one, then we'll do a longer one next time. Is okay. Right now, uh, what has you feeling the most FOMO? What has you... Well, because I know so much is coming up soon and regularly. Right, right now, what has you feeling like the most? Shit. <laughs> oh, that's a good question because I feel like everything does. <laughs> um... All right, I'll give you a second. I'll I'll throw mine out there so you get a little bit of time to think about it. But but right now, what weighs heavily on me, and maybe because I have a couple of friends who've mentioned it and stuff before, is is Indian Mud Run. Um. Indian mud runs coming up and I've been trying to hit that for like two, three years now. And just because of, conf- well, because of COVID and then before that was a year or so with confliction with other events, I haven't been able to do it. And it still looks like one of the best races out there. I've heard nothing but good things. I love the penalty system that he's instituted. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, but um, essentially it's, there's a certain amount of obstacles they're they're mandatory and then you know basic stuff like walls and you know stuff like that then there's a certain amount of obstacles that you know are really difficult and and high level fail rates so you can choose to bypass them do a penalty whatever the case may be and then essentially you get a mark against you so if say 
you know, say you, you fail, I think, and I think there's a dozen of them, there's like 12 of them. So say you fail two of the 12 and you come across the line and nobody else has made it through all of them or, or has, you know, done better than that, you know, then you're ahead. But then if a guy comes in later on and he was like three hours, but he gets through everything, he beats you. So it's like, it becomes first place is whoever finishes the most obstacles complete, no matter what the time, right? And, oh, and obviously if there's more than one person that finishes all the obstacles, the fastest one across. So fastest one completing all obstacles is the winner. If there's nobody else completing all obstacles, then the fastest person who's only failed one obstacle is the winner. And then it, when you cross the finish line, you don't know who won. No, you will not know who won. Unless that guy has completed or guy or girl has completed all the obstacles. Okay. But if you have a failure or, or something like, yeah, if you have one failure, then you, yeah, you're not going to know until, until later on. Chances are one of the top 10 people are going to, you know, have done them right. all. But it just makes it an interesting scenario because it's mandatory completion, but at the same time, there's a bit of a loophole so that you're not completely screwed. You're not at an obstacle for like 45 minutes. Unless you choose to be. And if you finally say, I can't get it, you're still not disqualified from the race. You can still, you could still theoretically even still podium. So are these obstacles, would you say then they're harder than like savage obstacles? These are essentially pretty much your NORAM OCR WC type obstacles. Okay, so manageable to good obstacle people. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a higher level of difficulty. Okay. So I would think, yeah, I would say harder than Savage, um, other than maybe the Savage rig, like the Savage rig at the end, yeah. that, that could definitely, but you're gonna see stuff like Gibbons, Valkyrie, stuff like that. Like I think that a lot of times you'd be uh, test stuff for, <laughs> for them. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's, that's high on my FOMO list right now. Um, what about you? What do you, what's up for you right now? Hmm. Oh, uh, my, um, it's number one for her as well. Which one? Oh, she's the same, Indian Mudrun. Indian Mudrun, yeah. Um, I guess, like, I I miss racing in general like crazy, but I, I'm really liking what's happening with Savage right now and their obstacles. And I think because it's been something that I focus so much on, um, and I didn't do well the one Savage race that I did, I would love to go back just as a good comparison and see how I would do um, on the Savage obstacles. So big FOMO with Savage Racing. I I have big FOMO with, with any mountain races happening right now too. I live in a small town that's flat as a pancake. So and I love mountain running. <laughs> I know I told you I made fun of you because of your Strava. I was like went on a bike ride and it was literally a straight line and a straight line back. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I looked at the elevation and there was like you know one meter of elevation per per, per kilometer or whatever. Yeah. yeah, we're basically like yeah country roads, super flat. So. Any variance in uh, terrain, I, I miss that like crazy. So that's my FOMOs, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's good. And obviously all the high rocks and decas, I'm seriously Jones to do that. I mean, the list is huge. Um, yeah. So when you see, when you see like Lindsay showing up the Savage and you see all these other girls showing up the Savage, and I imagine, because I, 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 would, I would definitely be feeling this, when you see them all stuck at that rig at the end, does that not like be, you do sit there and like look at the screen and go, I, I can do that rig. Yeah, I, know I, can. I really think I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have won that. I know it. I just, I know. It. But then the, the part you can't see is the accumulation of fatigue. You don't know what it feels like to, when they've got to that point. So, but well, yeah. And, and, and the level of, uh, and essentially, uh, moisture and friction. The level of moisture and friction that's on, for example, those cheese boards can get out of whack. Those things, I, I just know, I've never done one of the ver horizontal cheese boards out of Savage. I did them when they were vertical on um, Holy Sheet or the other one that was essentially just yeah. an excuse to crush your groin. I don't know how they set it up that way, but everybody I saw, including myself, you go, you jump on it, and, and those cheese boards just smacked you in the junk. Was, <laughs> I'm kind of glad they went horizontal now because they were, they were bad. They were bad. <laughs> I don't know what it was. It, it, it's bad memories. And I thought it was just the guys, but then I saw a girl go up there and just, just, yeah, again, the wife, bang. Oh, oh. <laughs> so thanks for putting those horns on. But anyway, the point was never done them there, but I have done them at ninja courses 
and they're indoor and a lot of times uh, those places get you know people with sweaty hands all over them and everything like that and even then they're slick and moist and mm -hmm. a different technique so that's like i said something you you don't see when you're watching it on the live stream yeah. you can't tell just how much grip it is taking and how much you know how much it is is there so yeah mm -hmm. i get that but i i i i feel the same even when i see the age group times on because i'm not going to win a pro weight but you know when i see the age group times especially like on blitz and stuff and i'm like Oh, I, could, I know I can get that. <laughs> All right. Um, and then the other thing, actually, another thing I saw, did you see, and they they took it from Battle Lines, did you see the obstacle they're going to be using for um, for OCRWC, the hoist they're going to use? Yes, where you're twisting the bar and the rope rolls up. I, it, it reminded me exactly of the grip trainer thing we used to use in hockey. That's I say. Yeah. Super advantage to all Canadians on that one. Yeah. Anyone who played hockey, I still use that. I still use that. I have it. You saw it the other day. Yeah. <laughs> and my grip work, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to smash, smash that thing. Every Canadian hockey player knows that one. <laughs> That's right. I normally would bet on Atkins, but now I'm super going to bet on Atkins because I know he played hockey and yeah. he's got a wrist shot from hell. He's going to kill that one. Absolutely. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. All right. Well, you know what? That's good for me. We totally didn't do what we were going to do. And that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that another time. And we'll have lots to bitch about because that was pretty much it. I was going to complain about everything. But we'll do it another yeah, time. We'll leave so. Dave's complaining to another time. He needs a lot of time for that one. It's true. It would have been a long episode, especially if we just did my complaining. And then if we added on to that's way too long. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So Beth, wrap it up. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening. Um, keep getting out there and crushing it any way that you can. And thanks for giving us awesome things to talk about. Oh, and next time we'll talk about CrossFit, too. Overload. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sensory overload of CrossFit. We need like six hours to talk CrossFit. Oh, boy. <laughs>